Hello there, my fellow oppressed peasants, and welcome back to some Warhammer Fantasy lore. Today's topic is actually one I didn't want to cover at all for a very long time. The reason for that was mainly its convoluted history and entangled web of infamous characters. But since, at this point I've covered pretty much all the other dukedoms of Bretonia, I thought it would be like leaving a job unfinished to not cover this one as well. And by it, ladies and gentlemen, I mean the infamous and cursed land of Musilon. Ironically, despite being the most shady place in Old Bretonia, it is also one of the most lore-rich, as this will be the longest video in the series, I believe. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, grab your Lady of the Lake popcorn and enjoy. The Dukedom of Musilon was a former founding dukedom that once had territories stretching across the western shores of Bretonia. Ever since its fall, Musilon is a cursed, impoverished land, which is plagued by constant misfortune, disease, and drawing the attention of dark powers. Having since lost its status as a proper dukedom, the lands of Musilon are thus the smallest out of all the realms, even though, ironically, it once held the title of being the most beautiful and fairest land in the kingdom. Much of the territory was taken by Lyonnais in 1814 IC, after the corruption of Duke Merovec was revealed. And I don't think we can properly understand the status of Musilon as a cursed duchy without going through the story of this guy. Duke Merovec of Musilon, known by many titles, including Merovec the Mad, Merovec the Butcher, the Dark Lord of Musilon, and, ironically, the Savior of Bretonia. A fearsome warrior and a strong leader, his desperation to restore the glory of the dukedom would lead him to become a powerful blood knight, feared throughout the realm for his bloodlust. Around 1813 IC, the Red Pox would sweep into the fair lands of Bretonia, killing many of the people. In that time, Merovec was Duke of Musilon, and he was a proud warrior looking with envy upon the glory days of the past. He was desperate to restore the prestige that his city had in those distant days. With honorable intention, but led astray by corrupt advisors, Merovec would set upon the path of dark powers. And thus it came to be that when the plague struck, the Duke and his knights were mysteriously unaffected. Seeing a chance for glory, Merovec mustered his men and rode out against the vile Ratman, who beset the lands of Bretonia at the time. He rode south and broke the siege of Briand. Believing that he was Landuin reborn, he followed the same route as Gilles Le Breton and his companions, and headed east to Athel Loren. He also relieved the siege of Quenel. At the edge of the enchanted forest, he would meet with the armies of Paravon and the Fey Folk, and then battle the Skaven. A great victory was won, and the rat creatures would scatter before the martial might of Merovec and his trusty knights. In the middle of that battle though, Merovec became soaked in blood, and he revelled in the killing. Even after his foe lay unmoving, still he continued to chop at their corpses. The virtuous and honorable knights of Paravon could only look on in horror. Nevertheless, all of them were invited to celebrate the victory upon the Skaven at a great banquet in the halls of Musilon Castle. But the guests would be horrified by what they saw there. Dinner was served by shambling, corpse-like servants, and spitted and impaled criminals were set around the hall. Happy Vlad von Karstein noises in the background. Merovec, drunk and feeling ill-appreciated, claimed to be dishonored. The king would express his revulsion at what he saw, upon which Merovec accused the king of jealousy and conspiring against the great savior of Bretonia. The people of Musilon tell stories about how the king challenged Merovec, refusing to let one of his dukes battle in his place. The duel started, and it was fierce and Merovec fought like a demon. The two fighters clashed throughout the hole until finally, with rage in his heart, Merovec tore out the king's throat. The duke then filled the goblet with the king's blood and drank deeply. Ever since those days, many have claimed that there actually had been no duel, that the king was simply murdered by an insane subject. Nevertheless, upon witnessing Merovec's act of blood first, the other dukes hastily retreated out of Musilon, 
pursued by a horde of twisted creatures and malformed peasants. The people of Musilan were led to believe that, despite his reputation, Merovec had been chosen to succeed the murdered king. Of course, in reality, the fey enchantress already denounced him to be a traitor, alongside the newly crowned Royarch. Lyonnais mustered its army and led a massive invasion of Musilan, and many of Musilan's own knights gladly took up arms against their leader. Having no wish to be associated with such a dishonorable liege lord and swearing fealty to Lyonnais instead. Faced with the might of Bretonia, Merovec would be defeated and killed, although many brave warriors fell beneath his blade. After his demise, Lyonnais absorbed a great portion of the duchy into their own realm, leaving only the most tainted lands behind. Although very vilified and despised, many notable knights and families owed Merovec for saving them from the Skaven armies. After he died, they would band together, and in spite of the king's wishes, build a mighty tomb for the dead duke. The huge stone mausoleum, the size of a small keep, was built close to the center of Musilon. Unfortunately, after many centuries, the tomb would sink into the marshes in the area, and was believed lost forever. Many a questing knight since have set out to find the tomb, but none ever succeeded. Geographically, the remaining land of Musilan falls into two main areas. To the west, the coastal areas are dominated by the swamp with isolated areas of higher and firmer ground. In the north and east, there are rugged hills, which are the edges of the forest of Ardennes. The entire Musilon is plagued by extreme weather. When the air is still, thick fog gathers. If there is wind, it is always strong and almost always accompanied by rain or hail. Thunderstorms are common, as are the fires started by the lightning strikes. Fortunately, the fires do not spread very far. It is said that in the time of the first Duke of Musilon, Landuin, the dukedom was more beautiful than any in Britonia. If this was ever true, sadly it is not anymore, as the land of Musilon is poor and swampy, its forests damp and dreary, and its climate unusually poor for the Duchy's latitude. Many areas around the Grismary are almost impassable swampland, and even the higher areas towards the border with Lyonnais in the north provide very little cultivation, being rocky and barren. The most fertile area is in the northwest, where the forest of Ardennes invades the dukedom soil. But few, if any, dwell near the forest, because it is abundant in man-eating monsters. Musilon's coastline is rocky and often treacherous, with the exception of the natural port on which the barony sits. Musilon is also defined by two main characteristics. The first is the river Grismeri, which for much of Musilon is made up of the Grismeri Valley, as it meanders its slow journey towards the sea. The other main aspect is the city of Musilon, a robust walled city guarding the natural harbor formed by the mouth of the Grismeri. The city was considerably embellished in the time of Duke Maldred, but it was never rebuilt after being besieged, and much of it is abandoned ruin now. As in most of Bretonia, there are many knightly fortresses and castles dotting the duchy. Chateau Han is one of the most notable, a well-built fortress overlooking one of the few stone bridges spanning the Grismeri. The Tour d'Alsace is also a well-known site being a tall and twisted tower in the north of the duchy, that is said to attract strange lightning and other portents. Oymen Castle is small, built on elven foundations, but it was shunned entirely despite its beauty, supposedly after its mistress was walled inside on charges of witchcraft. Although some of Musilan's fortresses are remarkable fortifications, or beautiful castles in their own right, most of them are in disrepair, and some are entirely abandoned. The hills of the land are rocky and treacherous, and most vegetation consists of scrubby thorn bushes. The Musilar rose also grows in the hills. It looks out of place here, but it fits right in. Its stems are infamously coated in vicious thorn barbs, and its pollen is a deadly poison. What is more, it grows where a human corpse has been left to rot. The sites of old battles thus turn into thickets of this deadly plant. The swamps of Musilan are even more treacherous, as the firm ground of a trail often sinks an inch or so before the level of the water. To make matters even worse, swamp mat creates false trails. 
The cursed dukedom is also haunted by the undead, in far greater numbers than anywhere else in Britonia. Indeed, the land actually encourages the undead. Undead monsters summoned by necromantic magic do not revert to normal corpses here if they become uncontrolled. Instead, they simply continue to wander around until destroyed in combat. The wandering undead can sense the borders of Musilaw and turn away. If forced across, they will simply crumble when they pass. There are many reports of vampiric nobility, although not on the same scale as Sylvania. There is also surprisingly few reports of beastmen, but beastmen, zombies and skeletons are common close to the forest of Arden. The people of Musilaw, what's left of them, are usually human, although you wouldn't know that if you just look at them. Many of the peasants are horribly mutated and suffer perpetually from foul diseases. Any of the residents of Musila are simply there because they cannot leave. Their deformities that are common here would get them burned at a stake anywhere else. Indeed, there are many Musilan peasants who are mutants but live in what passes for normal society because none of them realize that something is actually wrong. Some people do come to Musilan from the outside. But these are the most depraved and evil bandits, cultists of the ruinous powers and necromancers. They believe, and rightly so, that few people will ever bother them here once they enter the cursed land. Many of these immigrants find that the monsters waiting for them are far more dangerous than any bounty hunter though, but some do survive and add to the peril haunting the next set of arrivals. The villages of Musilan look poor and run down. The peasant hovels are on the verge of collapsing, the streets are little more than sewers, and there are as many dead animals to be seen as living ones. The inhabitants watch any visitors silently from their homes, cowering within and giving only occasional glimpses of their malformed bodies. The castles of the nobility also appear to be decaying, but here the appearance can be illusory. Ruined portions are not unusual, but the parts that are still inhabited are always well maintained, of course never beautiful though. The corpses of gibbeted criminals hang outside many of the castles, fat ravens feeding on the remnants. The nobles always wear black armor with a helmet, and they never reveal their faces. Some of them are actually undead, vampires, whites or mummies, and the same lord has ruled for centuries in some places. Others are simply mutants, or servants of the ruinous powers bearing the marks of their masters. Some are simply human and need to hide that fact, or else their neighbors, who might actually be vampires or worse, would think them weak. Almost anyone who lives here will lie about their origin. The reputation of Musinla for degenerate evil is not one that any adventurer wants to carry. Finally, the city of Musila, the walled city that is the biggest settlement here, has a population of beggars, madmen and criminals. Because Musilon has no official duke, the city is no longer under any kind of authority or order. This has made it the heart of Musilon's biggest industry, which is smuggling. Once a ship has slipped unnoticed among the Bretonian ships patrolling the kingdom's west coast, it can easily sail to the docks of Musilon. All kinds of contraband enters Bretonia via Musilon, and from there it can be smuggled to other nations with safer ports like Estalia or the Empire. Most of this is otherwise legitimate cargo that can be exempted from taxes and the limitations that might be imposed upon using a more law-abiding city. It is also not uncommon for a knight's errand to seek adventure and reputation in Musilon. The entire kingdom is an affront to the Lady of the Lake, and there is always evil to overcome here. Many errant knights have never returned from Musilon and some even stay there tainted by the curse and doomed to become part of the evil they set out against. The king is often pressured to declare Musilon the target of a crusade and send thousands of eager warriors to cleanse the land. But until that happens properly, it falls to the lone knight's errand to seek the darkness at the heart of the duchy and give their lives in fighting it. And this, my friends has been what I wanted to tell you about the cursed land of Musilon, the darkest place in all Bretonia, for today. Why is it that the most evil places sometimes have the richest lore? 
Anyway, like I said in the beginning, there's actually more to be said about this Cursed Land's characters. And if nothing else, I do want to narrate to you the tale of Malabod in the near future as well. As this was a guy who actually proclaimed himself the Duke of Musilan in more recent history. As always, I very much look forward to reading your thoughts on Musilan in the comments. If you found this informative, do leave a like, share, subscribe, and click the bell icon for future content. Thanks a lot, and the blessings of the lady be upon you.